Hi, in the previous video, which I'll link in down below, and at the end, if you haven't seen it, uh, we took a look at this Australian-made uh, Cistron Donna from the early 70s. It's a timer counter slash frequency counter, but it's not just a frequency counter. Timer counters do more. Anyway, um, we looked at the, um, the teardown of this and also uh, trying to calibrate the internal oscillator. It has two oscillators inside it. One is like just a, you know, a crusty uh, uh, quartz crystal um, on the main board inside. You know, it's not temperature compensated. Uh, anything like that so you know it's going to be like you know, in the order of like ppm uh, stability a few ppm something like that not great probably back then yeah we're talking like tens of ppm perhaps but in the back it does actually have an ovenized crystal oscillator which of course is fantastic and which we want but unfortunately when I was uh, tweaking the thing at the back it's got an adjustment pot to tweak that oscillator I couldn't get it working and I, I thought that I was mucking it like using this thing uh, wrong or anything but it wasn't I think there's actually something wrong with it so I thought we'd get our Agilent uh, frequency counter here I've done a couple of videos on this which I'll also link in how you can actually use a frequency counter as a gravity detector which is a fantastic video. Highly recommend you uh, check that out. And I also did a um, ovenized oscillator uh, uh, upgrade on this thing too, I think. Anyway, I've now got this hooked up to the output of the ovenized oscillator on the back here. So we're getting, uh, you know, somewhat over the uh, nominal uh, 10 megahertz. So let me just go and adjust that and see if we can actually make a difference. So trust me, I've got my tongue at the right angle and I'm twirling that and she ain't budging. So I can take it all the way, it's like a 10 turn pot, five or 10 turn pot in there. And I can take it like, oh, oh, I just felt it go to the extreme end there. And I can go to the extreme end on the other way. And it doesn't do any, it doesn't do diddly squat. So obviously there's something wrong. Has that pot, uh, you know, broken um, age? There we go, I've gone extreme end the other way. We can't adjust that, you'd expect you know, I'd, at least like a maybe a 50 or 100 hertz either side of that 10 megahertz uh, adjustment range there, and we're just not getting it. So I thought we'd uh, crack it open, have a look. So there's the puppy down in there. We'll see if we can uh, extract that out. I don't know like what uh, brand or anything. It's really hard to read that uh, green on on the uh, nickel finish or whatever it is. So let's try. No, I don't know how to get that out. It's got a big strap on there, something like that, and all this cabling. Nah. Anyway, hopefully it's not uh, like a soldered shut or anything like that. That'll be a pain. So it looks like we uh, have to get in there. There it is up there. There's a couple of uh, couple of screws. If we take those out, maybe it should uh, pop out and we can get access to the uh, strap, the nuts of which are on the uh, bottom side there. So let's give that a burl. Wow, this is actually the first time I've noticed like a fan, instrument fan, getting quite warm. The hub on the back of that, um, it's... <laughs> Trust me, that's like, it's ridiculous. Like, I didn't have it running that long to shoot the intro to this video. Crazy. So there's our module, Monitor PC from uh, Pasadena, California. Hmm, interesting. So there you go. The oven uh, runs at 115 volts AC. Um, so it must get that off a, a tap on the uh, transformer because this is a 240 volt uh, unit serial number for those playing along at home and there's the uh, adjustment pot in the back which uh, you can see the thread like it goes all you know a fair travel in and out there but i'm getting diddly squat on that so let's try and open. hopefully we can open this up so i think i have to like they've got like a socket on the back of this thing so i think i've got to prise it prise it out of the socket there gently ta-da Look at that, beautiful, thing of beauty, it's joy forever. Yep, Murphy will get you every time, look at that, solder. Time to get a bit medieval on its ass, I think. Meh, slightly medieval, um, <laughs> trying to um, unsolder it didn't work, so yeah, it was really jammed in there, had to sort of crack her open, so, oops. Ah, still work. Something like that. Anyway, we've seen inside uh, ovenized oscillators before. We're going to find some um, insulation. It's just a regular crystal oscillator that they just, um, a particular cut, a more stable uh, cut, but they keep at a temperature and then they insulate it. So, whoops. Oh, oh, hang on. That's coming out, but the 
adjustment pot is not coming out. Oops. Oops. <laughs> There's our crystal. Um, so th this is our heating element. You can see the coil wrapped around there. There's our, uh, <laughs> there's our thermistor to regulate the temperature. Just got a single tranny down in there. Bit of helping hand from this end. Stub as, an, as a mule, this one. Try and get some pliers and pull the, uh, the foam insulation out of there. Aha, there we go. I think there's our culprit. Some solder down in there, stopping it from coming out, I think. We'll break that out. I think it's still caught on some stuff. This is, this is real tricky business. Give her a bit of a poke right up the clacker. I think we've got it. Oh, oh geez. It's not, a, there we go. Oh, we're in. We're in like Flynn. See the burn marks down the bottom? That's fairly typical. Now, for those who will no doubt mention it, I don't think that this is asbestos uh, insulation here that they've got in this thing. I could be wrong, but I don't think it is. So, you know, any experts out there, please correct me, but I will uh, treat it with care. Don't worry about that. Now, this is interesting because you can see the uh, extensive burn marks on the back of this board and that's caused by this power resistor, Whirlwind, oh, for all you Whirlwind fanboys, fantastic. Um, this uh, big power resistor here. Now, like, like that obviously gets really hot. And is that the heating element? But like, I don't think so because obviously, like we've got our wrapping around the outside here with our uh, thermistor there actually measuring the temperature. So I'm not sure, is that like an additional heater or something like that? Anyway, it, it is obviously uh, designed to get hot. And there's your board for those that want to see it. There's your 10 megahertz crystal. It's uh, usually nothing fancy. Um, you know, it's, it's a nice particular cut or whatever. But uh, anyway, the whole idea is that, uh, you know, you get a decent cut crystal and you keep it at a uh, very narrow temperature, uh, you know, a defined uh, temperature range, regardless of what the ambient temperature is doing. And bingo, well, hence the name, ovenized crystal oscillator, because it just sticks it in the oven and keeps it at a fixed temperature. That's why it might take uh, some time to warm these things up. But once they're at temperature, they're yeah, pretty darn stable. So I've desoldered our capacitator, our variable trimmer cap um, from this other uh, trimmer cap here. I'll measure that one too. So we're getting a nominal 15 puff. So it's not open. Hey, she's working. So it ain't the trimmer cap. Trimmer cap seat, you can see the slug coming out now. There you go. That's, that's fine. That's gone to the full extension now. Seven puff. That's exactly what you'd expect. Seven puff up to like 20 or something like that. There you go. End of travel. 20, exactly. I called it. <laughs> Brilliant. So there's nothing wrong with the trimmer cap. It's not that. Something else. Well, it's not the other uh, orange cap down there. That measures 100N. Bang on. And that whirlwind resistor, 925 ohms. It ain't open. I'm not sure what value it's supposed to be. Can't see it. I was able to read the value on the side and it uh, says 1.025K. So 920 ohms, well, it's already in circuit. I'd have to uh, desolder it. And yep, desoldered, 1.025, marked, near enough. Heh, <laughs> that's a 7400, <laughs> classic. Date code on that, 1980. What? This is a like an old retrofit. I assume it's 8000, no, it'd have to be, they don't do 00 a week, do they? And they do 01, so that's not it. All right, I think we might have our culprit. One sad ass looking burned uh, tantalum there, which was close to the resistor. In fact, it's physically tied onto there and bloody LCR meter turned off. Trust me, it's, you won't have to trust me. Look at the value. Come on, slow as a wet week. <laughs> Look at that, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a short. Oh, poor little tantalum. Jeez, why would you design it connected to the <laughs> power resistor? Crazy. That's one poor little bastard. Uh, two point, I can still read it though, uh, 2.2 mic, uh, 25 volts. So, wah, 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 wah. 
Please excuse the crudity of the model, didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. We'll just uh, whack some film caps in there, I'm not going to put another tent in there. Um, so yeah, whack a film cap in, just to power it up again and just like see if that was the problem. And that's, if it's not, then that's probably as far as I'll, <laughs> I could be bothered to take it I think. Alright, for the purposes of today's experiment, we'll just leave it flapping around in the breeze. So, let's switch her on and uh, see. Yep, we've still got 10. That's a good start. It still oscillates and it's higher than before, isn't it? A couple of hundred hertz higher. Alright, let's trim this. Got to be careful not to touch anything because it was high voltage. We're trimming. We're, no, we're not. Yeah, it's going down. It's going down, but I don't think it's going to go all the way with LBJ. So, but it is certainly, certainly trimming. You know, what is that, a 10 hertz adjustment range or something like that? Yeah, it's coming down. I think I need to, I think it needs time to, uh, time to warm up in its original uh, configuration before it, yeah, yeah, it's dropping. So, I think we have a winner winner chicken dinner. Um, but, yeah, I'd like I'd have to physically reassemble it. That capacitor arrangement with the films, they were too physically big. I'd have to do it. But I think we've proven that it actually uh, has fixed this thing. And so that's what it was. I mean, the cap was connected right up to the res power resistor like that, physically connected. So the heat's conducting uh, through the leads as well as being radiated. So like there were burn, you could see the burn marks on it and stuff like that. So there you go. Um, <laughs> It was a, it was a tantalum. So for this video, I'm just going to finish this one up quick. I, I at the moment don't have time to uh, go find a uh, suitable physical form factor cap for in there and uh, and replace the thing. And physically, like you wouldn't do this like long term, like especially for like a <laughs> a frequency counter of this age. Like you wouldn't like an eight digit counter of this age. You probably wouldn't bother. So I just sort of did this as like a troubleshooting. Uh, exercise video. If you were serious about this, I've got an external 10 megahertz reference anyway. I wouldn't bother using the internal uh, oven-ized oscillator. I've already got this one with a probably a much better um, oven-ized oscillator in it anyway if I wanted standalone without my uh, external 10 megahertz rubidium uh, reference. Geez, you can see it really uh, really dropping now, so it's going to come down. Thermally, it's not very good. It's, you know, <laughs> the coil's half out there. Maybe I'll get the thermal camera. Well, I'll tell you what, that uh, that yellow wrapping around the thing and that coil that I said was like on here. In fact, it looks like um, that's not working. The power resistor in there is not working. There it is there. Like it looks like nothing's heating up. Even that spot there is like is nothing. That's just like where I touched it. So really, um, nothing to see here. Move along now. Um, it's just not heating up at all. So yeah, I wouldn't even bother like fixing this old crappy, uh, well, I'm sure it was good for the day, but you know, this what, uh, you know, 45 year old ovenized oscillator wouldn't bother. Like you would get, um, you know, if you really wanted to uh, uh, restore this and put an ovenized oscillator in it, then you would uh, simply just buy one of the new, uh, you know, or refurbished uh, 10 megahertz oscillators, like uh, ovenized oscillators, like I did for this one. Oh, it's coming back down. There you go. We could eventually trim that one right in. But uh, yeah, I, you know, you would get one of those um, ovenized oscillators um, and there's plenty of room inside this to retrofit it if you really wanted to. So anyway, yeah, I'm not going uh, to bother repairing that. Uh, I just wanted to troubleshoot. So I hope you found that interesting. We can call it a repair even though we didn't uh, finish the job off, but uh, troubleshooting and repair. If you liked that video, as always, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Catch you next time. Yeah.